This is Mike Sapsik from AMC's Comic Book Men and The Ming and Mike Show. And you're listening to the PBR Podcast, the best damn podcast this side of, well, mine. Hey! Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's going to be like a um, a lot of really forward thinking technological people all yeah. in one place, all working to, essentially together. Like, yeah, right. But separate, but together. It's, right. Huh. It's really cool, and that's that's we we thought of a shared universe a long time ago. Um, and again, um, another invitation: we want you guys to podcast with us. Come on to the Ming and Mike show. We would love it, man. Any anytime. Yeah. Uh, then. I mean, when you do, when you invite us, we're, we're, we're going to say yes, definitely. Then, like that night that we're going to cancel, and then like the week after, then the exactly. week after, we'll totally do it. <laughs> I don't blame you. I would do that. Actually, it's so funny because I had, for some reason, I'm just I, you know what? No, no, no. You should. You should be like, eh, fuck you guys. Uh, and and you should hit Ming too because I get splattered with so much of his shit that you know I. For him to get splattered with some of mine would be. Yeah. Would be wait, are we talking about sex? Uh, oh, no. oh, wait. No, 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 no. Look, already Johnson edits. Thing. There's already Come edits. Come on, that's a Johnson thing. Oh. Really? Mike Zapsick's in the house. Let's Woo. just get right into it, right? Why not? Are we right into this? We're right into it. I still haven't got used to that yet. I know, we, we don't play the shit up. Man. We don't we play the intro. Up. Well, you guys just heard the intro song, but. We didn't hear it. We just go right in because it feels, I guess, more organic for the guests. If it's if it's a guest that's not used to being in front of cameras or with microphones in their in their face, Mike is. But you know. I was gonna say and microphones, yeah. cameras. I mean, we were just having Ming's such dick, you know, the whole. Right, thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were just talking about him having Ming stuff all over him. You can't stop and play a song and then go into. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, well, you can. Flow. It just it it around it interrupts the flow. It, it throws Ming's timing <laughs> off. So <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to throw that time. No, 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 no. He's got a, a two minute window. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you so much for coming down, man. We've- Thanks so much. Uh, last time, uh, I I triple booked. Yeah, and unfortunately, we were doing the trial of Brian the- Quinn. Yes, which, oh, was, yeah. a, which yes, was a thing. huge thing, a huge. It was a huge thing. Huge but here's the thing for me: it's uh, he he got, um, and I'm not telling tales out of, out of school because he he admits it himself. Brian Quinn got uh, ass hurt by <laughs> um, Reddit. <laughs> and he got butt hurt by Reddit, what? What? big time. He got upset about something somebody wrote on Reddit. Uh, well, a bunch of people wrote, but yeah, you know, everyone. Hmm. Reddit is to me the it, it's the the gang pile of it, it's like it's like a, a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Don't pile on the rabbit. Yeah, everyone piles on. If you've yeah. got a beef with Quinn, going back to like that that sob, you know, he uh, he tackled me. On the you know the schoolyard yeah yeah let's let's go and grab him what a what a scumbag you know and they, <laughs> everybody jumps on and uh, we have a guy who started working at the stash get him Steve Dave mm-hmm. who is a hanger on of tell him Steve Dave mm-hmm. I, I, he's not a bad guy um, he, he's a challenging guy but he's not a bad guy right and he's like wow you should, and he he delights in in telling me how much hate I get on Reddit. Because I get a ton. I, Do you I read assume. a lot of Reddit? I don't even look on I Reddit. I don't look I don't on even, Reddit. I don't Not, even. It is a foreign concept to me. I don't get it. It's man. like a darker no. Facebook a little bit or something. Well, Facebook. I, Much darker. It's, yeah. it's like the old. Um, it, it's a throwback to when people would just go on and bitch about whatever they Yeah, it's they very thready. To. It's not. Yes. It's, it's not, no gra- crazy looking graphics or Nothing. cool it's very interface. Bare bones. Threads. Man. It's almost like a throwback to. The old chat rooms, like yes. oh, almost in the yeah. sense, it's, right? In a, in a way, it is the old chat rooms. So, but you could you post a link in there, and the videos will pop up and stuff. But like that, you it, could yeah, do that, it's sure. basically. I mean, I, I never go in there. I just, I'm sure there's stuff about me in there too, but I don't. Oh, well, well mostly the sex there's... tapes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, there was about <laughs> <Of course laughs> Derek. Would t- yeah, no, no, there <laughs> no, was. Of course, you would turn it to him. No, man. there you was. got to though, because that's what it is. <laughs> no, that's what Reddit is. Yeah. All there about was Fastlane Daily stuff. People people ripping on me in there, but I never read it. Sydney Lesperance. I never read it. 
King. Our fact checker. Can you fact check uh, how long did it take into this episode before Derek made it about him? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I, was it a record? What is I the mean, record, by the way? Like, not even through the intro, I think. You know, okay, well. Like, you know, I think the intro ended one time, and he was like, man, you know, I, this intro would be so much better if I sang on it. <laughs> Speaking of intro, you didn't even, like, you didn't even go, Mike Pilato, Derek D, and special guest, Mike Zapsick. I introduced Mike Zapsick yeah, two seconds Yeah, but you didn't ago. do it like you do it. No, but I stopped doing it that way. We yeah, just discussed well. This. No, yeah, but I thought you still did that, even though the music didn't come in. Huh, Mike whatever. Palano, Derek D. Frank, the <laughs> producer in the house. That is! And we have a very special guest, Mr. Mike Zapsick. Which hey, I, hey, 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 Dennis, how you doing over there? <laughs> that's what yeah. I was waiting for. There you go. Uh, yeah. I think it's great that you have him cleaning out the cat boxes. You, somebody Good has boy, to do Dennis. it. Good boy, Dennis. Someone has to do it. <laughs> and right. it's very in vogue right now to have a cat. Uh, yes, it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, a shaved one especially. <laughs> yeah, what well, is at least it with they that? tell me on Reddit. You know? yeah. What is it with that, a shaved cat? It's hypoallergenic. Because everybody's allergic to something. Mm. Oh, ah, so I'm you can get a cat that's hairless, you're not allergic to it. Although yeah. I heard something on the radio, someone was still allergic to the cat. Good. It's possible. It's possible. I, before we get too far off topic, I do want to plug this because I think it's important. The, um, the trial of Brian Quinn was put up as a charity. No, no, no. They did a cochlear. They did a different one. Okay. The, so do we um, want to plug that charity? The, co the cochlear uh, well, It was episode. for a good cause, right? Yes, like, it was for a young gentleman to get... Um, you know, his, his hearing back. Okay, so how can the PBR posse help out that cause? You can go to, uh, I guess it's, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you know what, Google, <laughs> Google, Steve, Dave, and yeah. Well, I do what I do, Google. Yeah. Or ask Ming Chen to get me a free copy. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yes, Google it. <laughs> well, Dennis will get it to us in a minute. Well, Sydney might figure it out and send it. Well, Sydney does it. That means that this is Monday and you're listening to the show and we won't be able to say it, but if Dennis does it, we'll be able to announce it now. Oh, so on true. Monday when you're listening to this right now, you'll be able to go and support Good it. call. It's like time travel. That you makes sense. It's great. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's the Cochlear episode. Cochlear. Of Tell Him Steve Dave? Tell Him Steve Dave, All yes. Right. The what? Clear? Cochlear. Cochlear. C-O- I Google that one too because yeah. I don't know how to spell it. I... <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like the Christopher Reeves thing where, you know, he became the champion for um, people with um, neck and neck and spinal yeah. injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't really before. He fell off the horse, but then he became the champion. So I, I don't have problems with my hearing right now, So, but I might. So a or Any of us might. Of course. Probably Especially all, we get feedback from these. Listen, These man. are lovely. Uh, you headphones. like these oh, headphones? These are great headphones. Skull, skull candy. Um, lovely sponsor. Of PBR. They believe it, then they, the checks start rolling in. There, there you go, man. <laughs> Thanks for uh, putting your foot on my throat and I'm just stepping sorry. down. I, just, I get <laughs> aggravated because we... I mean, having a pro producer helps sometimes, but other times they just get in the way. Really? I've, mm. uh, we, we have no producers. We have no editing. Right. That's why we're the success <laughs> that we are. Yeah, the Ming and Mike show uh, available in back alleys everywhere. <laughs> Google us if you don't know who it is. Dennis, get on that. Yeah, where is he? I was, you know, I normally I ask people. I said, if you had to, if you have to call, you're sitting in that chair and you have to call for Dennis for whatever reason. How would you call for him? Dennis, Dennis. I love yeah, it. everybody. Everybody has a different take. You got their own little flavor. Fla am I too aggressive with him? No, that's that's your take. You know, it's our own. Everyone's got their own little flavor that they had. You know, that's, that's fine. right. Give me a Dennis. Oh, you've heard it already, Dennis. There you go. You gotta pull, you you gotta that pull is away. Not even a little bit. Uh, too over the top. It's perfect. Yeah, you like? Uh, oh, I, yeah. I appreciate that. We have a, um, a a store up right now with some PBR merch, and one of the shirts says, Keep Calm and Call Dennis. Yes. It's our top seller. It's beautiful. That's I was checking the, it out. The intern. I mean, I wanted a coffee mug. Come I'm, on, I'm thinking about going and grabbing a <laughs> Keep Calm and Call Dennis. Oh, man. I don't understand. Like, or a Team Derek mug. There you go. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, we we mentioned the merch store in twenty seconds. That was good. <laughs> not bad. I don't know if it's a record, but it's damn fine. It's close. All right. So not only are you a uh, a fantastic podcaster, oh uh, thank you, a man of 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 all the knowledge of comic books, which we may try to challenge tonight. A little Help bit. yourself. Um, <laughs> You'll but me. you're also uh, one of the stars of Comic Book Men on AMC. Yes, as if you listen to, uh, again, going back to, to get him, Steve Dave, one of the lesser stars, because that during the um, the trial of Brian Quinn, he was like, you know, uh, would you consider yourself one of the four funniest guys on there? <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this douchebag? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to, to kind of dig, dig deep, 
Okay. All right. Because I feel like I know the story. I think I know the story. Probably sixty percent accurate. Right? All the time. All usually sixty percent. Um, but I'd, I'd like to hear from the horse's mouth. So I think because I think there's a really interesting story that maybe a lot of people don't know uh, the origin of how the show actually came about. Oh, this is actually a really cool story because. Um, Are you talking about Comic Book Man I'm or uh, the podcast? I, no, not no. I'm talking about Comic Book Man, but yeah. I, which I think comes from Tell Him Steve Dave. It does. And, right. And I want to even go like further back that. Like the, when the stash started, right? Because you come on stash starts. How how much further on do, till you come on board at the stash? Nineteen ninety seven. The uh, Kevin had purchased the stash. The guy who owned it was Comicsology before this, and uh, it's where they all went to get their comics. He and right. Walt and um, the guy, the original Steve Dave. That's they called him Steve Dave. That's where that name comes right, from. Right. Uh, he was just. I swear to God, if you took 400 pounds of Silly Putty, put it on the comic book guy from The Simpsons, and just sculpted, uh, that's that was him. And he he, in, he wore purple. Always wore purple? Always wore purple. I feel like purple. I've seen this guy. Was he? You must have seen this guy. He was uh, a fixture in Red Bank for a while. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, comic books and loneliness are a dangerous combination. Yeah, yeah that's my, him. because my brother went to high school. In Red Bank, and we'd always be walking around, we're waiting to pick him up or whatever. You would, you yeah. would have seen if it was back in like the the late, mid to late nineties, yeah, like yeah. ninety four to ninety seven. Yeah, my brother graduated in ninety five, ninety six, or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, you would have seen him. What was his? You called him Steve Dave. What was his real name? His name was, um, oh my God, Steve. It was it Steve, was Steve, but they didn't. Walt, Brian, and Kevin weren't quite sure. He had introduced himself once. <laughs> and he, he spoke with the affectation like this. He, oh, he did talk. constantly talk like this and tried to speak. He's literally down the Simpsons to you. guy. He was literally, <laughs> I swear to God, the Simpsons guy. He was comic book guy. You know nothing. He was Lewis Lane. Um, <laughs> he and he was very. He would follow you around. And the original stash was over on Mama Street. It was a very small. Uh, it was it was like a hole in the wall. It was across from like uh, from the from the um, the Irish pub. Like, no, well, that... it was actually across from it was Bilo's back in the day. Now it's Teak. Bilo's. They went. Oh, oh Teak, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. by so, the diner, right? Okay. Uh, it was yeah down the street from the diner and very very small, and he would follow you around. Just oh, that's the worst. I know, <laughs> and I mean, literally, when you can only like skirt past, you know, the his purple. You know, hanging velour shirts. You know, it's like, <laughs> what the hell? And there he oh, is. So he had multiple shirts, but they were all purple. He all didn't just wear no, one thing. He didn't wear time. just one because that when makes they him even over. cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in an Einsteinian way. Christmas, way. Get me anything purple. <laughs> and velour. Yeah. I wish to drape myself in velour. Velour. Oh, and uh, he had introduced himself to, to those guys and, you know, is he Steve? Is he Dave? I don't remember what's his name. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Steve Dave? And yeah, you know, yeah. he would respond, oh, I am excellent today. Never, Thank you so much. I he like never corrects you. Never. No, Steve Dave. And so he became Steve Dave, and that's where Steve Dave came from when Kevin was writing Mallrats, and we need a comic book guy. Uh, Steve Dave, perfect. And tell him, Steve Dave, that's that, yeah, that's line. where you get ah. that. So, Is this guy sitting on his couch now? Like, dude, yeah, he I was know? one of the no. first. No, oh my God, I've got a Walt Flanagan story for I you. was oh. the first, and these guys coming in. These took were the my worst. Glory. Uh, what happened was. Um, <laughs> He's got to be aware of the show, right? Uh, he is aware that, well, uh, maybe. Does he ever not come in? Sure. <laughs> not, not quite. He. Um, he Invited a whole bunch of people over for a party. And uh, Walt said, all right. And Walt's not the most social guy in the world right. anyway. But he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for that 25% discount. So I'm going to go over to his, his house and go to this party. So he goes. He's the only one there. Shows up. Uh, Steve Dave's wife answers the door. And I, oh, there you are, Frankie. You're, you're saying to yourself, this guy's not married. Yes, he was. And so she opens <laughs> the door and the invites him in. Is she in purple? She is not in purple, <laughs> uh, but she was. Um, he so introduced Simpsons guy, his wife, and Walt, and Walt, and he no one else at this party. No one else at this party, and uh, he introduces Walt to his wife and says, "In her country, she is considered a genius." No lie, that's what he said. <laughs> and then she went upstairs and like said she was a mail order bride. 
Mm. Okay. And Worst. She, she talked him into, uh, so Walt played video games, and he's like, so do I get my 25% discount? He or hangs what? out with Steve. Hung Dave. out playing video one games. One-on-one. One-on-one. And no one else and came to the party. No one else came to the Was party. Was other people invited? I don't know. Oh, it's kind of sad at it's, the same time. Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. So, uh, but well, it goes two ways. I picture hors d'oeuvres out and like lights, like kind of well, going. It, go, it goes two ways. One, what, one thing is said, like Steve, Dave invited fifty people, nobody came but right. Walt, and then Walt played the nice guy, like I gotta hang out and play video games. Right. Or Steve, Dave invited nobody but Walt because he wanted to play video games, and he would geniusly conduct, you know, knew that he would feel bad. Huh. And hang out with like there's two ways the story goes. Yes, yeah. Or actually there are three because oh. here's the <laughs> so really sad the truth. part. So uh Kevin makes clerks, clerks hits big, Kevin's got some money, Kevin wants to buy a comic store because he and Walt had always talked about it. And um this guy says, Well, perhaps you'd like to buy my comic book store, my comic book emporium. And so Kevin He owned said, it, this guy. He did. Purple so shirt owned it. Kevin actually yeah, he did. So Kevin actually bought it from him because his wife had talked him into moving back to Taiwan or Thailand or wherever they were, oh. wherever she was from. Yeah. And uh, I hear back uh, that <laughs> no sooner do they set foot on that soil than she's off to her. She, she divorces him wow. and is doing whatever she's doing. He stays. He stays in Thailand, Taiwan, wherever the hell it is. <laughs> and he's teaching, he's he's working at a pizzeria, he owns a pizzeria in Taiwan or Thailand or wherever the hell the it hell is. How does that pizza taste and, like? And exactly. <laughs> tastes like whatever the water tastes like. Yeah. Like dead frogs. You, you, yeah. you never know. <laughs> and uh, he's teaching um, Taiwanese boys how to speak uh, English. Amongst other things, I have no idea what else this, he's teaching. This is the, the sad the, part about this, this story. This is a movie. Is the thing that everybody's oh, missing is that all of these people in Taiwan think that Americans are like Steve, Dave, and they're watching The Simpsons, going, "That guy teaches me," <laughs> and, and they're learning how to talk like him. Exactly. So it's like the Bud Light commercial, right? right? Oh, yeah. All these Taiwanese are running around talking like with this accent. They're they're <laughs> speaking like this and wearing velour. Wow. Right? Like, that's crazy. So what's the end of the story? Where is he now? So uh, we're not sure. He came back one time. He, he looks at me. And he and I had a, a kind of a problem, too. I was a reservist there. I didn't know Walt, Brian, or, or Kevin at that time. We were all going to the same store, but different. What do you mean a reservist? Terms. When uh, a reservist is a guy who uh, has, like, a weekly pull list. You know, I we have him at uh, the stash. If you are into comics and you're like, hey, I want you to pull all my comics oh, for okay. me and then I come in and I just pick them up. Right. This way, you know, it's like you're reserving your titles. Sure. So, um, Like new comics that are coming out? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I was a reservist there and I wasn't there for like three weeks and he called up and I was, he called up my girlfriend and told her to tell me to get my behind there or else... You know, dire happenings will transpire. <laughs> what? And, and she told him to go to hell, and uh, it almost made her cry because he was really nasty to her. I was like, I'm not going there. Screw him. What a weirdo. I know. It's very guys. strange. And that's the last you heard. <clears throat> and that's the last I saw of him until he came back, and I was working at the stash. He's like, you look familiar to me. Do I get a discount here? I'm like, no. <laughs> Sorry, no. Now, when he came back, had, had the show been picked up yet? No. And the podcast, does he know about the podcast? No. So you started working at the stash originally because you love comics and you just wanted a cool job and you knew these guys. And uh, I, yeah, I was uh, actually, the- basically what happened was uh, I was working, I used to be a chef. Right. Oh, so, I did know that. Yeah, I was, a, I was a chef for a long time and I was uh, engaged to my wife and she said, look, here's the deal. I, I, I love you. I, you know, I want to have a family with you, but. You're a chef, and you're never around. You work like 80 hours a week. Yeah. Uh, you don't know what a holiday is. I, you know, if we're gonna have kids, I want you know somebody to to be around to help raise them, maybe mm-hmm. a yeah. little bit. Oh, good call. And I was like, okay, so I decided to go back to school, and I was at Brookdale, and I was taking classes, and Walt's like, hey, you want to work a day a week? You know, I I need some, or actually, it was uh, two days out of the month, hmm. so. And somehow I parlayed that, and I'm like, uh, technically I'm still a student at Brookdale because I never graduated. So, (laughs) but this fell into my lap, and you know, then my wife got pregnant. We were, you know, I I had this full time job, and it was great. So, so wait, what was the and only what was the full time job? Snowballed. 
The comic book? So yeah. you went full time at the I went full time, yeah. So how long are you full time there before the uh, the show hits? Uh, geez. Show hit in 2011. Was it 2011? So Yeah, because you're six years you're six so, yeah. right now. Uh, right? Full time, uh, nine years. So, all right. So now here's the part that I'm not uh, I'm not sure of how it went down. I have my my theories of how it went down. Um, so they're shut people. So right at that time, 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. Pawn Stars, Hardcore Pawn, um, all of these like shop shows, right, are huge, super hot, right. Uh, tell him Steve Dave has already been on for a long time. About a year, yeah. I was only a year at the time. Yeah. Um, so what was that? That was uh, Brian Walt and Brian Quinn. Brian, Brian Quinn, Quinn yeah. Brian Johnson, Walt Flanagan. You and Ming popping in, other side characters. Right, Sunday Jeff. Right. Jokers had already been in season one, already been filming for a season or two at this point. No. No. Wait, wait, no. 2011? No, because we no, because Brian was under contract with, with North, North uh, True TV, and they wouldn't let him be on comic book. That's right, but uh, we were filming concurrently. Okay. Because they... There was something happened when Comic Book Man came about, Brian couldn't be on it. That's right. Right. Contractually. Yeah. Right? yeah. And that makes... It, it took him a year. To, uh, I think they were... Uh, filming for about six months before. Okay. Yeah, I remember Comic it happened. Man got picked up. All right. So here's where I, I want to make sure I'm right, and this is I'd like you to like go into the story. So all of these Pawn Star shows and everything are are hot, and Comic Book Man kind of falls into that category of kind of show, right? Right. Storefront, knowledgeable, educational, funny, right? Do you mean we steal Sales. from them? Absolutely. No, but I'm saying like, you know, <laughs> no, listen, right. man, like one car show comes out, it's hot, and the 20 car shows come out. Oh, you're you know, American right. Chopper and and the know. guys that were on that show get their own show, like yeah, the count yes. of cars. And yes, all that 100. Stuff. And just oh, like is that guy annoying or what? Really, yeah, his annoying. show failed too. But there was a really good one on the guy who used to come in. Uh, I'm talking about Pawn Stars. The guy who used to come in. Um, and he was a really nice guy, kind of like a hippie dude, and he would redo all of, like the metal work and stuff. Did you, did you ever watch the show? And he Pawn did like, oh, yeah. and he made phenomenal. He did phenomenal rest. Oh, restoration! It was called oh, American yeah. restoration. Oh, where they would do he, yeah, he, and it was him and his sons. Yes, yeah, that was really that good. was really good. Like an old for coke, some reason. like anything. Like you'd bring on this old like little bicycle and right. or like an old coke machine or whatever. Yes, yeah. exactly. And just like you know, just like Joker's, like Joker spawned. Um, uh, uh, after jokes, now is being shot, and then there was. Um, Joker's Wild that was on for a little bit. So, you know, show, they, everybody, and then everybody tried to do a hidden camera show. Sure. But I digress. So is this how it went down? They were shot. Somebody was shopping a book, a, a comic book show based on Pawn Stars. And They're, it came across. No, Kevin? actually, what happened was uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead uh, was the impetus. Oh, no shit. AMC had Walking Dead, and they're like, Oh, holy crap! We, and it hit. They knew it was going to be because uh, that's a comic book. Yeah, originally. yeah, yeah they, they knew it was going. They knew it was going to be a success, but they didn't know how I big like, it was going to get. Let's cut you up. I feel like people watch that show and love it and don't even know that it was a comic. Book some people might. But just some, some people at this might. point, yeah, I think maybe most, this point, yeah. Most po most people after season one or season two didn't know it was a comic. Right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. <clears throat> exactly. Like it's like most people don't know that the Road to Perdition was a comic book before it was a movie. Yeah, great movie. Would you say, not to get too off because I really want to hear the story, mm -hmm. but would you say that The Walking Dead is the best television show based on a comic book? Uh, one, to of date, you know? one of the most popular. I think that it's one of the goriest at any rate. And it's definitely got to be the most successful, right? I mean, even if you go on, like, on cable, yes. Uh, yeah, like Batman was a television. I'm not talking about the movies. Yeah, Obviously, you got, they were you good. got Gotham. Right, that, uh, but that you, comes after Walking Dead, right? Like does. Walking Dead paved the way for that. And it, Gotham it, is pretty good. I watched that. That's pretty. That gets pretty gorgeous. Yeah, you got um, Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl. Mm. You right. got a whole a whole slew. Did, if it weren't for The Walking Dead, none none of these. Well, would. did yeah. did the one with Superman? What was the one? Uh, Smallville. That arguably might have been before. That went for a while, but I don't it know was. if that was based on a comic. I mean, obviously, it's based on Superman, but was Smallville that version? That you know, not really. You know no, what I'm trying to say? They yeah. turned it into a comic book because yeah. they're like, "Hey, wow, a TV show. Let's make it into oh, a comic book." Oh, they went the book. other way. They did. Yeah, it. It. You know, one hand yeah. washed the other. It was weird. Hmm. But um, no, what happened was AMC had Walking Dead, and they're like, "We don't want to lose viewership on the you know the eight months that it's off the air. So how do we how do we do this?" So they went to original media, and original media. Um, had a friend in one of Kevin's producers from Red State, uh, Elise Seiden, and she put uh, Charlie and Charlie, the guy who uh, owned Original Media at the time, 
and uh, Charlie Collier and Kevin in a room together. And Kevin said, you know, just seems to me that the easiest way to do this, he, he's, I, I love Antiques, Antiques Roadshow, but they don't have any go. comic book stuff on there. So yeah. why not do it, you know, set in a comic book store. And you can even make it sort of a competition show where you try to go out and find the, the wackiest comic book guys out there. And um, so he's like, this is genius. Let's do this. Like Pawn Stars with, uh, he's like, well, I like Antiques Roadshow, but Pawn Stars will work too. So they're, they're like, this is great. And they, they come up with all these ideas and they call up Kevin. And they're like, listen, now, now all we got to do is find a comic book shop and, <laughs> you know, to film it in there. Right. And, you know, we got... <laughs> We got like ten thousand dollars to do the sizzle reel, and Kevin's like, "Why don't you do it in my comic book shop?" Like we've been talking for like months, and this is the first time we've heard that you've got a comic book shop. Right. He's like, "Oh yeah, well, I never thought about it, but I got a comic shop down in Redback." <laughs> so um, you think it'd be the first thing he says, but he's you know he's pretty big time at that point. He's like, "Yeah, yeah find it somewhere else. Yeah, they'll yeah, find exactly. it." <laughs> yeah. hey, listen, you're not giving me any money. Go go pedal your papers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they they came down, and he said. By the way, listen to Tell Him Steve, Dave. That's, you know, Walt runs the shop. He's on this podcast with uh, Brian Johnson, who used to run the stash back in the day, and he also ran the one out in, on the West Coast, and uh, Brian Quinn, who's, you know, he knows comics. Right. And so they listen. They're like, this is great. That's so crazy, Let's man. do this. Wow. And they brought it down, and Brian was under contract for uh, IJ, so... Practical Jokers kind of took him off the playing field. Right. So then they call up Ming and me, and they're like, well, you're on. I'm like, oh, great. Okay. Did, did, did you Wait, was Ming working there to it at, as well? Ming, Ming was. Ming, yeah, Ming, Ming did all the back end, Yeah, right? Ming's, Ming's Kevin's tech guy, so yeah. he was doing all that stuff. And I was just working at the stash. And did I balk? No, not really. I was like, oh, great. I'm going to be on TV. This is lovely. And everybody right. dreams about it, but yeah. it's like, until you see yourself on TV, it's like, no way. There's yeah. no friggin' way. Because you, you had never done, like, hosting or... Nothing. You weren't in production at all. You just nope. truly loved comic books, and, and it was... Exactly. Your, that's and all. you were in the right place at the right time. That's right so place. awesome. I, I fell ass back. I'm like Kramer. I fell ass backwards into <laughs> this gig. Yeah. So, and seven yeah. years later. Yeah, I know. And it, the really weird thing is that, you know, we, we started doing I Sell Comics as a joke. Actually, it wasn't. It, the joke was supposed to be on me and me. <laughs> right. Because... Um, uh, Johnson was taking over this morning show for Kevin. Kevin was doing something and needed somebody to do it. So he and Q would do it uh, every morning. And after like a week, Johnson was just like, screw this noise. I'm done. It's like, let's put Mike and Ming together. That'll be fun. <laughs> like, we'll watch them crash and burn. And oddly enough, we didn't crash and burn. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, the ratings went up on, on our shows. And Kevin's like, hey, you guys have your own podcast now. That's I'm awesome. Like, oh, cool. I mean, he has the whole the whole Smodcast network, right? So it's like, yeah, there's a lot of there's also almost like a satellite radio. There's a lot of air to fill, so you can. The, the beauty of that is you have a built in audience based on prior shows where you right. can try so many different things, and if it fails, it fails. But if it doesn't, you just move on to the next one, right? You know what I mean? No, yeah, absolutely. I mean that that network is huge. Yeah. I mean that's just so cool to fall into. I mean you're on the same network as Breaking Bad, like huge huge, huge oh my God, TV yeah. shows and and obviously Walking Dead. And just to be like, you know, what was that feeling when they're like, we're going to do a TV show and do you want to be on it? It's like, uh, yeah. They didn't even you, really ask. It, it just like happened kind <laughs> yeah, of thing. Exactly. Really? It wasn't even so much like, hey, would you like to be on? It's like, here, sign this and you're on TV. And then the, probably the first, and then after a couple, the, probably the first year, like, oh, people like this. And then you could go into renegotiations or whatever you need to do to. No, they pinned us down. Uh, oh, really? First, yeah, first season. <laughs> well, like, first season, I, you don't get shit, right? Then, like, I mean, yeah, but you're in season six now or you're shooting seven? Or we're, six, no, shooting we're, six. we're done with six, uh, hoping for seven. You know, uh, we'll see what the numbers say. Six con hasn't aired yet. Or am uh, I wrong? It's coming on soon, right? We're, we did half. The okay. first half, and we're coming back with the Walking Dead. You come Dead. back with the Walking Dead, which yep. comes back uh, actually yesterday. <laughs> yes, like, right. Comes back. You should have watched so, us last night. I hope you enjoyed my performance. If you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't see it, you can uh, go on demand. Yeah, the, and I can tell you this right now. Ralph Macchio's on. Oh, he, nice. he, does he look exactly the same. Just about. Did He's a little grayer. <laughs> He's got some crow's feet. But uh, you know what? I still wouldn't want to take a crane kick from the man. At some point, did somebody else sweep the leg? Yeah, of course. Um, my God, of course. He's got to help hate that, And right? he does. He's like, you guys, thanks for not, you know, making me a stereotype. And I'm like, okay. That's <laughs> like, great. yeah, that's right. You've had some uh, some great people uh, on that show. Let me ask you this question. Of all the people on, who, 
I, I don't want to ask you who your favorite was, right? Because you love them all. But who were you most enamored by? Somebody that maybe starstruck you. Uh, there were a couple. Were Actually, um, uh, Nichelle Nichols, because she's a horror. Oh, and she's still, yeah. She's, she's 80 years seven, old. Oh, she's 80. 80. Yes, yeah, 80 years old, and she's still a beautiful woman. Yeah. And uh, we've got uh, a woman who uh, works. She's she's on the crew, and um, she's all she's black, and she's like I'm telling you, black don't crack, Mike. She still looks great. I'm like, yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and uh, that was that was pretty amazing. But uh, this season, we've got a couple people on that are. I was, uh, I can I can tease it because we're Ming's already let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> uh, Katrina Law mm -hmm. from Arrow. And from Spartacus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Spartacus. I, <laughs> Derek knows what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Spartacus all, gets uh, naughty, right? Yeah. Oh, and so does Katrina Law. Oh, wait a minute. I was just going to... This is so crazy, all right? So let me try to wrap my head around this. I was just got excited because I was like, I got to tell him. Mm -hmm. And then I realized you're talking about Foxy Roxy. Katrina okay. Law went to Stockton where I went to college. No kidding. We hung out. She date, uh, Frankie, you'll appreciate this. She dated Joe Fish. Right, Joe Fish is a good friend of mine. Who's a we had a guy who called Joe yep. Fish in college too. So Joe Fish dated Foxy Roxy, who we all went. To, she was a hippie at Stockton. This we chick all, is a smoke. We all used to hang out. The other night, uh, we all we all go to dinner. Uh, my college friends all go to mm -hmm. dinner every Christmas. Um, you know, we all get together. There's like four or five of us. I bet she shags like a moose. And the, and it was all guys this year, so the wives weren't around. So <laughs> oh, a lot a God. lot of the conversation came up. Mm -hmm. And I and I, we, I was like Joe Fish. When's the last time you saw Foxy Roxy? And he's like Tuesday nights on Spartacus. I'm like, what? I had no idea she became like this this celebrity. She's amazing. She's Cherry Hill, super from cool. Cherry Hill. Yeah, she went to Stockton. Super cool, yeah. man. Super cool. She is amazing. And I I told the story today on. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. Uh, again, time travel because we were yeah. doing. Um, Ming's going to be podcasting with her out in L.A. when he goes out next week. I got to so, tell him about about that connection. Oh. Um, but uh, we met her down at Jekyll Island Con, and she is just the most down to earth person and drop dead yeah. gorgeous. Holy crap! Yeah, we walked. We worked <clears> at the <throat> coffee beanery together oh. at the mall. In, really? In, <laughs> yes, dude. You and this chick? Her. Wow. Foxy Roxy. Her real name is that's her stage name, Katrina Law. What's her name? Um, we called her Foxy Roxy. Her real name, if um, hey Frank, do you have Pirate Rob's phone number? Text him and ask him what Foxy Roxy's name was. Oh, are we gonna blow it on the air? That's, no, that's, no, that's, I won't. I won't okay. say it on the air. Okay, cool. I, won't say it on, I mean, I'm calling her no, Foxy no, Roxy. She, we called her that because obviously she's gorgeous, and uh, I don't know why where the Roxy came from. I gotta, I gotta have to ask Joe Fish. That that sounds like a stage name in itself, Foxy Roxy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> now more. coming out on the stage, <laughs> <Yeah>. Foxy Roxy. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, Get your did. dollar bills out, gentlemen. <laughs> we did go to school down in the uh, South Jersey, Atlantic City area, man. You know, so oh yeah, there were a lot of those. Those places around. Yeah. My uh, yeah. my wife grew up down in uh, Williamstown, right outside of Glassboro. So, okay, yeah. right on. So you know it. All right, you hear that music? I do. We're going to play a little game called Top or Bottom. Uh, I'm going to give you two words. You're going to tell me if these two things were in a, in a relationship, which one would be on the top, which one would be on the bottom. It's th Listen, it doesn't, I love it. doesn't have to be sexual. It's however you want to play it. The game, right. A lot of people go that route, but it's tailored to you. So it's about you. We're going to round table it. We're all going to chime in. You ready? Let's go. Number one, top or bottom, Mike and Ming or I Sell Comics? Ooh, uh, Mike and Ming are on top and I Sell Comics on the bottom. Yeah. Gotta Which be. one's first? Uh, I think us as uh, human beings. <laughs> well, what is the difference between the two in, in, in content? Oh, uh, Mike and Ming, or actually Ming and Mike, um, we we Did just do stream of conscience. It doesn't matter. I you, said it. We do it. Yeah. And you you're being it. polite. That's yeah. nice. Um, <laughs> I think I always say Mike and Ming. No, I gave it to Ming. We were talking about this one. <laughs> we used to be the Smod Coast morning show on Fridays. Yeah. And then uh, Kevin like cut all the morning shows out. So then we went uh, rogue. We left the Smodcast network on that. And uh, <laughs> he's like, Mike and Ming, Ming and Mike, what do you want? I'm like, I'm going to give it to you, Ming. Ming and Mike. It's... 
That was nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we just, we talk, we ramble. We were talking about uh, Action Park last week, so. Dude, you know the news. Of yeah, course, but like, Knoxville. they're not sh- shooting at like Alabama or something, right? Well, so no, I think they're shooting like Parts overseas. Of- yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. That, it's nuts. Yeah. Well, I Shoot was, it here. I was thinking about that, though. They're, they're going to have to have like a concrete alpine slide. They're all gone. That's not there anymore. I know, but they could make one. And if this budget's It's like, an operating park, though. I think they should operate. E- e- <laughs> even like, but even like Camelback Mountain <laughs> Dude, in the Poconos has. They like have the an rem- alpine slide. Th- it's 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 not used and it has been used for years, but you still can see it. But that's Action Park was at Mountain Creek. I know, which I'm just is saying, now Action Park again. Yeah, and they had that upside down. Uh, water, yeah, water dude, slide, which they don't have Yeah, anymore. we were talking about that. It's shut down after like a month because yeah. kids Someone were getting stuck, stuck in there. There's a documentary. It's, uh, it's a very short one with comedians. It might be 20 minutes long. I'll try to find it and post it up on this episode blog where they talk. Everybody tells their tales about Action Park Jumping back off the, in the, the day. Jumps. And they say that they say like the old owners of Action Park used to go up to like the lifeguards and like the crazy kids that work there and would give them like a hundred bucks if they would try it out. Because they didn't know what was going to happen. That's Could awesome. you imagine that shit today? That's great. Oh, oh. Dude, no way. Derek, We're so litigious. That sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? If uh, if you had to put you Mike and Ming show, and you had to put one name in front of the other, what name goes first? Uh, well, I, I generally say Mike and Ming. But what name really goes first? Derek, Mike, and Ming. <laughs> That's what I thought. Frank, yeah. Frankie. <laughs> um, Ming and Mike. The Ming and Mike show. You've got it. That's right. You know, I'm yeah. I'm bringing up the the rear. You know, you gotta you gotta end strong. Yeah. That's what it is. You're 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 not a huge. Uh, what's the last comic book? Yeah, you Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm not a giant comic book fan. Probably the last time I was in the stash. Okay. Flipping through some. But that's also <laughs> not. Um, Ming and Mike is not really a comic book podcast. Right. Well, that's what right. I'm saying. That's, that's why, why she put it on top. Yeah. Yeah. Over. Gotcha. I sell comics. Exactly. Right. So. Although I'm sure that one is good. Yeah. It's more of a niche audience I, uh, that you know. We get. I uh, yeah, I too am going Ming and Mike or Mike and Ming over I sell Yeah, I mean I top. you gotta put that one on top. We were we were guests on on, on your show. Absolutely. You were, right? So that's gotta be on top, right? Hell yeah. Although I, I am a fan I am a fan of certain comics. Uh, and I wanna talk to you about this after, but I wanna sure. bring up the um, the preacher. I wanna talk about that. Let's See, I don't know about that preacher. Yeah. Um, number two, top or bottom, interviewing or being interviewed. I would put being interviewed on top and interviewing on the bottom. I'm not very much into uh, you know doing you know work. I, I don't like <laughs> yeah. doing research. Hey Dennis, <laughs> do some yeah. research for me. Yeah, he um, still hasn't answered our question. I know, son no. of a bitch. Uh, I would much rather be the one. I I like fielding questions. Yeah, it turns out that it's actually kind of weird when uh, we Ming and I started doing the the convention circuit, the comic cons. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out when I'm up on stage. And I start slagging on him and just answering questions from the audience. And you get to be as honest as, as you want to be. Yeah. You know, and for me, I'm like, ask me anything. My, mm-hmm. my life is pretty much an open book. And the more I, it's like therapy, the more honest you are. And some, some guys asking you, so, you know, what's it like to, and we hear the same questions over and over. Like, what's the weirdest thing they ever brought into the stash? And it's like. Well, it was a two-headed pig, and sometimes I try to make stuff up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, there was this, you know, lady came in and tried to to sell us a child, and um, <laughs> we bought it, and uh, his name is Ming now, <laughs> Ming yeah, Junior. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you find like people that have been on that circuit for a really long time, like your horrors or or people like that, are how do they handle the repetitive nature of the questions? Yeah, do the cons? You know I mean? Do the cons? Ever get a little like, all right, we gotta go to we gotta go to Albuquerque Con right now, or not yet? Did they ever they, get? Did they ever they like ha- like no. lose their sheen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yet. Well, that's good. They they have for for many a person. Uh, we had uh, Lou Ferrigno on Comic Book Man. Yeah, the Ferrigs. <laughs> the the for the Ferrigs. <laughs> uh, I have a story about Lou. Lou, um, it was 2001 out in Chicago. My wife and I went out to the Chicago Con. It was our um, like belated. Um, honeymoon Mm -hmm. so we go and we're running around we're having a great time and i said oh my god there's lou ferrigno no one there's no line and you're talking about uh wizard world chicago which has like five hundred thousand people in there and no one's online really ferrigno he's just like sitting there he's just sitting there you know just pretty much picking his toenails right and i'm like okay you know what and i said to my wife i'm gonna go up and i'm gonna thank him for you know, giving me joy as a child. So I, I went up and I said, Mr. Frigno, 
I want you to know something. You, you know, you meant a lot to me as a child. Thank you so much. Um, you know, and and I, I really appreciate. You know, and he's like, you gonna buy something or what? No shit. No shit. No Did you way, bring that up dude. to him when he was on the show? There's no way, Come man. On. No. Oh, I would 100%. He still would have beat the shit out of me. I'm, I'm sorry. Beat the dookie out of me. No, you can say shit. He, I, I 100% thought that he, that, that, uh, that you would, you need to, you would say something if you saw nah. him. Because now you're kind of, I don't want to say on his level, but you have a TV show for years and he's on the show and it's like, hey, remember that? He probably doesn't even remember anyway. No, of course but like, not. You said this and he probably would have been like, oh, I'm sorry, you know. Or no, he do you think, no, he's like, a, he's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. But <laughs> do you think no one was there because that's the word on the street about Maybe. Him? These days, yeah. That's a, and Shatner's the same way these days. Oh, I've heard that. But he's yeah. he's vocal about it. When any, any interview you hear, he never talks highly about fans ever no and that's right. i think that's been his downfall we were at a con with him and i actually got to talk to him uh in the green room and he's he's sitting there he tweets he's he <laughs> i swear to god he's like like if your grandfather found out about twitter and it's like hey uh if you start tweeting we'll give you 20 dollars for every tweet and uh you can look at naked women oh well, okay and yeah. grandpa would do it right that's that's Bill Shatner's thing. He's like, all right. He cool. gets paid for every tweet. No, I don't think so. No. But he feels that. Do way. his yeah. do his uh, tweets read like he speaks? Yes, very <laughs> much so. Just you go, you're like, wait a minute, hold on, let me check this out. Oh my god, they do. <laughs> Frankie, uh, number two, interviewing or being interviewed? Um, interviewing. I, I like to to pick away at you know get peel back the layers, peel back the layers, and find out. You're an onion peeler. I am. I like that. <laughs> Uh, I've interviewed a lot of people and done a lot of interviews, but I think I enjoy getting interviewed. No shit. Better. Yeah, I, I couldn't have picked that one out. <laughs> <laughs> but I do enjoy interviewing people, but I also uh, no kind of don't. improv off what they're saying and kind of make it funny. Because if you're doing Man on the Street and you have like someone that's a dud, you got to still, you got to still be the performer in that, in that scenario. Because, you know, I mean, sometimes people are just giving you nothing. So you need yeah. to, you need to find a way to make that funny no matter what they are. Yeah. But I think... I do like like kind of like you said. I got to do less work. Yeah, just, inter just interview me. Inter inter be being interviewed on top. This is interesting, man. Um, I, I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say. Believe it or not, I would prefer to be interviewed in the sense that it's easier. Mm -hmm. It's definitely easier. Like you said, you you could just you decide how open you want to be, and you can be that way. You don't have to worry about filling the dead space or if the person's exactly. giving you yeah. nothing. Interviewing, which obviously we we do more of, which I do more of. I, and I love it. I, I've done you know, tons of it. Yeah. It can be really hard, man. Like, sure. It can be really hard sometimes. It's draining. One of the things know? people don't really, like, you'll see these people interview someone and they're just, they ask the question, they shake their head up and down, yes. The person answers, they go right to the next question. Yeah. It's like, listen to what they're saying and yeah. respond. That's like, like, it's a conversation. Yeah. That's what so many people don't realize. S sitting, sitting in this environment right here, having a conversation, there's a lot of shit going on. And your mind, you know, it's, it's almost sometimes hard to be just naturally in the conversation without right. worrying about other stuff, even though you're multitasking. When, but, you know, like when someone's just talking to you, asking you about you, it's, I'm going to put that, I guess I'll put that on top. Yeah, it's, I mean it's that's it's simpler. <laughs> Did you guys get to see the Jerry Lewis interview for uh, yes. entertainment? Was that not the amazing. best thing in the Is world? This a new one? Did you see? Oh, it's amazing. He was mad about them coming into his house yes. or something, and and uh, they were late, and it was like it was, it was the piece was called like comedians and actors over ninety or yeah. something, and he they were just like well, when you when you recorded in Vegas when you when you used to uh, perform in Vegas did you enjoy it and how how was that experience? Yeah, it was great. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, it, just, it was. Yes, it was great. But that made it so great. That made the interview so great. Right? We, oh, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There are a lot of things going on around. Yeah, here. I know. There there are, man. You know. But I, I thought that uh, his. You didn't see this, Mike? I his, did not see this. Oh, his turn. It is the best eight minutes you will ever witness. It is because one answer, answer one question. Well, answer, he was one word answers. Right. <laughs> he just, was just on Mark Maron. Was he? And he gets up, dude. He gets up. You should listen. It was recently because I I listened to it in the last three weeks. Um, he gets up and he stops the interview and and he gets he up and walks away. 
He just and Mark was like, "That's it, man." Like Mark was like, you know, I don't know if you ever listen to that. I have, pot, yeah. But he digs and he gets in the conversation with these people, and he was just like getting in the conversation. And this dude just was like, "Was he getting into it for a while?" Was yeah, there, and I, it felt like a really. And I was even like, I don't, I didn't grow up with him, you know, me either. But but you know, I know is. who he is, and I enjoyed. Like, I got definitely wanted to hear those stories, mm -hmm. and he just turned it off, man. That's, it was very weird. Just, he is just a very weird dude. And you know about the the day the clown cried, right? What is that? What's oh that? my God! I can't believe I'm I'm educating you guys on this. The day the clown cried is a wholly owned film by Jerry Lewis. He conceived oh, it. Oh, because it was so terrible. He bought it. He well, he funded it. Yeah. He didn't want any oh. uh, any. I've heard Howard Stern talk about this. I yes, think. it is about a clown he that's started sent in to. Miming, right? Did he? Uh, I have you know what? I think he, I, talks about that he probably did, but um, he he's a clown in Germany who talks against Adolf Hitler and is sent to a camp, and he he starts he's in this camp and he's a drunk and he's like this sucks and so the kids are all you know come around him and he he puts on he like makes his own makeup out of the mud and he he becomes a clown and and the Nazis see this and like hey let's use this guy to get them you know to you know be docile and so they find out and like the ending is him he has to lead these kids to the gas oh, chambers geez. i swear to god this this film has never seen the light of day yeah. it's in uh the only person there are six people who have seen it one of them is harry Shearer. really and harry Shearer is like i can't believe what i watched <laughs> oh is it my feature god. length it's yes it is feature length it is they uh, and this is like the mandela effect i think because i think I swear to God, I've seen clips of this. I'm sure it's had, leaked out, you just, know, like. But no, well, Jerry Lewis, he's got it in a vault in his house. So, wow, insane. I can't believe I. I, I think I heard Howard Stern talk about. He this said or something no show. one will ever. He might have seen it. <laughs> uh, he might be one of the six. He he said no one will ever see this movie ever. Is this just in from uh, Pirate Rob, who the PBR posse knows? Um, they said, uh, we asked him, why did we call her Foxy Roxy? Mm -hmm. Katrina Law we're talking about in college. He said, well, all of our friends in college called her Roxy, so that was her nickname. And he goes on to say, well, she was fucking hot, so we all called her Foxy Roxy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, this just in. Pretty much that's <laughs> what you can take from that name anyway. But, wow, that's crazy. That's a crazy thing. But, Mike, you got to see that Jerry Lewis interview. Oh, you have yeah. to. Oh, it's <laughs> it's tremendous. I mean, this kid's interviewing him, and he's just reaching and grabbing it, and just not, he's getting nothing, and it's great. Top or bottom number three, podcasting or comic con -y. Yes, you're on the wall. I don't know if you just picked that up. I, I just saw that. I'm, <laughs> holy crap, I'm on the wall. Um, podcasting or... comic conning I guess we'll call it. Con like, what, how would you refer to it as? Uh, conning? Conning. Conning. Because con con that could be totally different. Like, uh, Derek yeah. and I can well, go yeah, and yeah, con know, some we, people on the street. Ming and I here. con people into you know giving us money for our signatures. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say podcasting and then conning. Mainly because podcasting, again, you get to, to talk about whatever you want. Yeah. And um, being at a Comic-Con, uh, and I, this is like the top of the first world problems. Yeah. They're like top of the list is when you're there and people are coming to see you, you've got to be on. So if I'm not feeling it that day... I have to. You got to turn it you on. Still I got to turn like it when on. you're filming too, though, Say, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to come to perform. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you got to turn yeah. up the dials. So, but potting, you are you go in there and you just get into your rhythm. You just get into that. Yeah. You guys know what it's yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, that, that, that's, that's, that's so true, though. Cause like my acting coach used to be like, they, whoever's watching you does not care. What what's going no. on in your personal life? You get in front of that camera, you do the job, and you deal with it later. <laughs> I, the worst the worst experience I had when I was in I was in Ottawa with the Rangers on the first playoff run, and I was in the locker room after the game interviewing a player with another. Uh, I don't want I won't say his name, but he was another interviewer, and mm -hmm. we were both uh, from the website and from the digital. So he he was older. He's been with the team since '93. I was this is my first year with the team, so he was he was threatened. I guess that they were bringing in somebody else. You were, you were training for his job. Pretty much. Yeah, and he's gone now. And, uh, hope, you know, well, I don't want to jinx anything, but we'll see if they make the playoffs. But so he, uh, we were interviewing Stu, uh, Stu Bickle, whose jersey hangs on my wall, like that strawberry jersey over there. You know, what I mean? and, uh, it was a game, game worn. Mm -hmm. And um, he, this guy, like, threw me under the bus and, like, embar and was embarrassing me 
in front of like in the locker room after a playoff game in front of all the players. You know what I mean? And it's like you're, st- but I'm still on camera, mm-hmm. and you have to eat that shit. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and you don't, you don't, you can't show it in front of the, the players either mm-hmm. because you don't want to lose that respect. For it's it's hard to get them to talk to you anyway. Yeah. After a game in the locker room, so you have to like to eat that shit. I remember after I did the shoot, and Greg Oliver, uh, a friend of the show, he's been on the show, uh, was the camera guy and director of that. Mm-hmm. I remember like. Slipping out after I got what I thought I had to get, and I mm-hmm. walked out of the stadium, and he, f- I like sat on the curb, and I was like, I was as red as this. Oh yeah, you know. And Greg came out, and he was like, but I, I had to hold it together. Yeah, <laughs> like, you in front to of camera, man. Like, it's tough. Sucks, it's hard to do. It? Yeah, yeah. Somebody treating you like a bitch. Yes. And, oh man, there's nothing worse than that. Oh, you know worst. what? The only thing you could do from that is in- internalize that and um, never do that to somebody else. <laughs> or I mean? or turn it into rage and do it to everyone else. <laughs> that's that's the Brian Johnson method. <laughs> well, Two Car- angles you could take on that. Karma, no, no. Karma bit that dude straight in the ass. Did you answer, Frank? No. Um, obviously for me, podcasting, but it's so interesting, Mike, what you said about, um, you know, when you go to all these Comic Cons, like, you have to be on, you know? Mm-hmm. I see you guys, I see Ming's social media, like, this weekend here, that weekend there, and I, I think to myself, like, especially when it's a far-off place and... Maybe not the greatest place I'd want to visit. I'm like, God, how does he do this? I know, it's just like, like all over the world every weekend. It's it must be, you know, that can be tiring. I think. Yeah, like the East Futbuck, uh, you know, in Montana Comic yeah. Con. Yeah. This is Ming and Ming Chen's gonna. He's opening up a, a Safeway too that weekend. It's great. <laughs> he's cutting the ribbon. One of my favorite things from social media with that scenario is Sal Volcano. Every because they're all over the place. Every time he's in a hotel, he just takes a picture out of his window, and it's always like the shittiest view. It's like the dumpster, <laughs> yeah. and, you know. And he's like San Diego, California, beautiful view. It's a dumpster and some homeless guy shooting heroin. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Do you answer? I didn't, but uh, podcasting on top and I guess Comic Conning on the bottom until I maybe go to a Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> One knows. Podcasting on top, definitely. Top or bottom, number four. All right. Cooking or sales. Sales is the only word I can come up with, right? Okay. That's accurate, uh, right? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's good. Working, um, at, working at the stash of sales. Working at the stash is a lot of sales. Um, I'm going to say cooking and sales. <laughs> Cooking because you I mean, love I love. always had a passion for it, and you know I got burnt out big time. Uh, but on now co- on cooking, on co- oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god, you you're working like a 14 hour shift. That's the rampant alcoholism, you know. Yeah. <laughs> People leaving their drug paraphernalia all around. You. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> but um, you know, you walk in and, and probably cook some mean dishes at home though. Now, huh? oh yeah, oh, I'm sure. I get to do all bunch of stuff. And you know what's really nice these days? Um, Enjoy it. I do, and we get free stuff from uh, like advertisers. Yeah, and I get to to cook that, and, and we periscope. So we, I was going to say, why are we not doing value. a Mike Zapsic cooking show? Uh, my wife and I actually did one episode of uh, dinner on a podcast. Yeah, and it, people loved it. And you can go and find it someplace. Google it. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, but it we actually cooked, and we just had a a meal and. A conversation. It was really cool. Nice. Um, this one's tough for me. I really don't have any frame of reference, but I guess cooking. Yeah, you, you're not in sales, so. No. <laughs> I don't want to buy anything, sell anything, yeah. or process anything, uh. or sell anything <laughs> sold, bought, processed. What movie? That's same Say anything, anything man. Right? Of so good. Uh, I totally I love Lloyd Dobler. Lloyd yeah. Dobler, yeah. Uh, I am the Show key lies. master. I did, uh, I had, <laughs> I wanted to be John Cusack when I was growing yeah. up. Better Off Dead was like the story of my <laughs> life. My yeah, no, I, that's yeah. One Crazy Summer. No, Better she's off right, Better Off, Better off, Dead. Dead. Better off Dead. Okay, One, cra- one Crazy Summer is... Uh, oh, that's on the boat, that's it, like yeah. Nantucket? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was with um, <laughs> uh, Bobcat Goldwing. Yeah, okay, right, 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 right. Why are you so fat? Why are you so fat? Yeah. I used to beat the shit out of him. Better Off Dead is the, the K2 skis, the K12. Yeah, K, or the K- K12, yeah. <laughs> Derek's like, oh, Go that way Derek's really like, fast. I do know that movie. He wasn't born. If what? something gets in your way, turn. The, he ends up skiing the whole slope with one ski. One right? ski. I, I, do know, know, I, do I don't know why that. I remember I that. I do know that movie. I don't know. Yeah. Like, you guys know it, but I think Language remember that Language lessons scene. from a man who knows how to ski. Yeah. <laughs> I know that movie. <laughs> who was doing... What, wait, the guy who was doing those voices was an a, a Asian man? 
Yes. Oh, he was, right? Yeah, actually, it was a, an overdub, but that was the guy who played- No uh, shit. Yeah, that was the guy who played Chosen Donger? in uh, Karate Kid 2. Not Donger. Uh, long, long, no, you're the, long. Long Duck Dong. No, you're thinking of uh, <laughs> 16 Candles. Long. Where is my automobile? <laughs> automobile. <laughs> <laughs> lake, oh, big lake. So good. Uh, Ming was so good in that movie. <laughs> he was amazing. I swear to God. Right when he when he uh, <laughs> oh all shit, sexy you're... American girlfriend. Yes, you're, you're right. You're right. The dude they pull up to him and they want to race him. Yes, and it's the badass dude from Karate. It Kid. was the badass dude from Karate Kid. Oh, I like Karate Kid too. I liked Ming and Bloodsport actually when he, when he fought Jean Claude. Yeah, Dan but he threw the stuff in his eyes. I, like, I wonder how long it took him. To, yeah, was you know, I was a bigger fan of Ming in uh, Lethal Weapon Four, but oh. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, my favorite work of Ming was uh, was when uh, Goonies. Indi- it was Goonies and then Indiana Jones. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. That was, yeah, he was yeah. so good in that. <laughs> and I, I'm, is he upset though that they? I know you guys were on AMC as well, but when they killed him off, when Negan hit him with the bat, uh, you, you know what? Uh, upset, like he had a fallback on comic book <laughs> man. That was the good thing. So interesting. He's like, well, I can't hang out with Lauren Cohen anymore, but at least I got Brian Johnson. <laughs> um, I, lo- I love it. I love how Ming is. He's, he's in every movie. He's yeah. in every- <laughs> I'm going sales on the bottom and the other one on the top. What was the other one? Cookie. Was the other one cookie. drinking? Cookie. Oh, cookie I love. Guy. I actually love cooking, especially uh, grilling. So, so the last grilling. one, top of oh, hands down, top. I can't wait for a grill season. I love it. Although my grill got destroyed in the last nor'easter we had. Mine might be oh, destroyed. Like, who would have thought to like? I, Move your grill inside. Like I never like the wind was that strong. It picked my grill up, slammed it on the concrete patio, and exploded it. It's a it's a gas grill, mm-hmm. and I uh, so it's not propane. It's and I never unplugged the gas. Oh yeah. So oh, oh, so the it's, wind it caught out. it. Wow. And no, it didn't rip out. The wind caught the grill, lifted it off the ground, and then the the gas line held it. And bang on the like that. And was then that made. exploded. No fire. Get, um, when I say explode, I mean like all of the oh, metal just, and okay. all of the innards. No fireball. Thank God. I because I have the safety shut okay, off for the winter at the house. But I was really I didn't even notice it till the, till the day after. And it could have like what if it would have ripped a gas line out of the house? I would have died. Yeah, that would have been good. My my hot water heater would have ignited and boom, the whole house would have exploded. Down. Moral of the story: Put your fucking grills away. Yeah. Not only that, but that would have been badass. I mean, no, <laughs> Thanks, Mike, no problem. No, Thanks. no. I mean, I'm glad nobody was hurt, but that would have just been awesome to see. Right. And that, that was a crazy storm. It was crazy. Dude. I was flying back from Florida in You're that, and, and that? yeah, I'm getting. I, I'm not. I, I like flying. I'm not a, a scared flyer. I was flying back from uh, West Palm Beach Airport, and there's a. Uh, I have my buddies texting me like from Jersey. They're like, "You're not flying home in this. There's no way. Uh, you, you, you better you do, don't get on that plane." And like I'm, I'm like, you can't tell me that I'm in the airport ready to get on the plane. And yeah. they're saying, yeah, it's weather's I mean, they pretty They fly bad. around that though, you know what they, I mean? Yeah, like, they and actually, it was a very smooth flight. Or they go flight. above. Yeah. They, they went yeah. above until the very end. You could tell we were coming mm-hmm. down fast to cut through it real fast. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a little. It was actually more freaky before I even got on than it was actually on. But still, flying into that, it was very windy that day. It was crazy. Do you remember those lightning storms down in Texas? It like killed five people, and they were flooding in. Uh, the hell was it? Was it Houston or Dallas? I forget. I think it might have been Houston. But um, we were delayed. I got delayed on a. We were supposed to leave, but they they brought somebody in um, before the the cloud cover. You know, they shut the airport down. Yeah. And these people from Montreal, Montreal, mm. were coming in, and they delayed us. It, Fifteen minute window shut like that, and then there was a five hour uh, lightning storm centered around. The airport, it didn't move. It That's was just crazy. lightning all over the place for five hours. Watch, it was, and yeah. I'm like, oh my god! And I had to be at work <laughs> the next day. I'm like, uh, you know what? I I gotta be at work. <laughs> and so we we took off at two o'clock in the morning. I was like, all right. And they're like, well, you might not live, but we'll, we'll get you up in the air. I'm like, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> how, how do you how do you have the show with such success and still have the sh- the doors open at the shop? I mean, you have to have constantly have people coming in. We do. You know? It's we're not like uh, Pawn Stars where we you know had that velvet rope and you only let twenty people in at a time. We're still like we're still like a niche show. Mm-hmm. You know we're not getting forty million people coming every day. They still have to sign waivers in. and everything once once they walk in, right? If, well, if, on camera. If, I'm just talking about like yeah. on a Tuesday when yeah, you're no, not shooting. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, generally speaking, in February, the first two weeks usually suck. So we're, we're, it's like our downtime where we can we can get stuff done and just like kick back. But you know. Having the store open is what keeps the uh, the tape yeah. rolling. So, so when they, do you have people come in 
on a, just a normal day, you're not in production, and like, are they like looking around for cameras? You sure. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. you're filming today? I'm like, like yeah, you- sure. <laughs> sure we are. Don't swear. Do- yeah. <laughs> Don't you see all the cameras? Some guy starts getting naked, like, woo, I want to be on camera. It's like, people are crazy, right? Put, you, put your clothes back on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have, like, or, I have comic books that, I don't know, I have, like, two big stacks of comic books in my, in my, in my, in my parents' uh, attic. And uh, I have all the, with the Death of Superman comic books in the cases still, like, in the plastic. And I ha- bought the ones that you could buy and actually read, are they ever going to be worth money, the ones in the plastic? Not even close. Not even close, No, right? no, no. They yeah. printed a million of them. The, the way that, that that'll happen is if they're all destroyed in another Nor'easter. Yeah. And <laughs> yours are the only one that survived. All right, let me ask right. you this. I have a bunch of X-Men toys. Uh, in the box? In the box, in the case, in the plastic that I bought when I was younger. I just and never opened? I just never, I never opened. I put them in a are box. They? And, and so they're like the original Cyclops, the, the Cyclops, the blue one with the mm-hmm. thing on the back, and his things get... His his eyes glow red when you okay on the back. Those are they gonna ever worth anybody? Probably not. Cause, yeah, probably uh, not. yeah. The uh, right, let me ask you this: Marvel <laughs> cards. I have a ton of Marvel cards. Some are in great shape. I mean, I got the I got the Wolverine. The mm-hmm. uh, you know in the hologram and sure. the, the screws are in the case. And everything. They gonna be worth anybody? Uh, do you have a bicycle? <laughs> I just put them in the spokes. Yeah, <laughs> put them in the spokes. That's yeah. probably your best bet. Sweet. Yeah, just we sit don't up do... there in the attic just waiting for it to not make money. The comic book <laughs> industry has had like. Five or six, you know, like with the bottom falling out, at least five or six times in the past, I don't know, 40 years. Cards? Like baseball cards. <laughs> cards. Five or six times in, in the last 10 minutes. I mean, the bottom yeah. falls out constantly on those things. Yeah. Like, these are going to be worth millions of dollars. No, they're not. No, yeah. No. Cards That's... never. Yeah, baseball cards. Once once you heard Don Russ, the word Don Russ is like death for anything. So, <laughs> Don Russ, yeah. It's, it was tops, right? You need the tops. tops. You just tops. Yeah. They should have just. Yeah, because then it went to tops. upper deck. I remember when I collected mm-hmm. as a kid because I, I still have, have all a bunch those cards. Of upper yeah, I have like Jerry Rice rookie cards. I have a couple there. of interesting cards in my collection. Like I have like a Cecil Fielder rookie, like a couple of those. You know what I collected that I have put away and I always thought they were going to be something, but they never amounted to much was um, Ken Griffey Jr. I have all of his rookie <laughs> cards. But, and I thought like, he still was a phenomenal player. Yeah. But. When I was collecting as a child, they card you'd buy cards for a little bit of qu- uh, coin. Yeah. Nowadays, the cards aren't. There's no market. No, unfortunately not. Like I sold a Pete Rose rookie card after he got busted for the scandal for like s- pennies on the dollar. I was like, oh, I should have held on to it. <laughs> My yeah, dad. What is it worth? What do you think it's worth now? Uh, probably. N- well, do you have a bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> My My dad had let him in a had all the the. The good cards. My dad's mm-hmm. just turned seventy, and he had like Mickey Mantle rookies oh, yeah. and like uh, uh, Ty. Co- what are the, the guys from that era? Yeah, like and, the fifties and sixties. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah. they were stolen from his parents' basement. Oh. I'm like, oh, do you have any you brothers imagine? or sisters that he can pin it on? No, not no, him, no. Yeah, it was just he does have my aunt and uncle, but it was stolen from some punk. That, uh, that last top or bottom question I wanted to ask you, I, we don't have to round table it, but it goes to the point of the preacher, which I want to talk about before. Let's Com- talk about preacher. Comic books versus comic films. And like that, even though it's not a film, that's, a, that's one of the most, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, was one of the most brilliant adaptations the way they started it in season one to adapt to television with running the risk of pissing everybody off that loved the comic. They did. They pissed a lot of people Until off. Until the very end. Quinn told me that I had to wait till the very end that for the payoff. was brilliant. And it was so brilliant. Dennis, the intern, and I lo- both love that comic book. And we, we shared stories about that for mm-hmm. years. And he had to even point it out to me what they actually did. with Right? It's... I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. I mean, we can, spoiler alert, right? It already aired. Right. But I correct, didn't see it, but I remember me you if, told Correct me. me if I'm wrong. The comic book begins with the end of season one of this movie. Yes, very much so. Brilliant. However, um, the comic book didn't have everybody getting together. Or right, the comic book to- had everybody come together in uh, one situation. Like All the major players were right there, uh, except for uh, Star. But mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing him. And mm-hmm. uh, the Santa Look, Killers. What is this yeah, on? Yeah. Is this so on Netflix? Was, uh, no, it's on it's AMC. On AMC. Oh, you should oh, that, oh that's it. right. Yeah, you remember you saying. The, the you, way, 
Derek, to be honest with you, wanna, what you should do is read the book. You, you think? know what? I'm going to get him. I'm going to get you the first trade. That's that's my gift to you. I'm going to get you that's the first awesome, trade. What, of the preacher? The preacher, yeah. So next time I see when you come to podcast with us. All right. There, you guys awesome. are invited to, to the Ming and Mike show. When you podcast with us, I'm going to get you the first trade. You're going to love it. Really? And you, you say right. read it first. Read it first. Because it will piss you off a little bit. Once you, once you watch it, and you're going to be like, yeah. son of a bitch. Because I was, I was like... What the hell? But it, but it was mind blowing. It was, yeah. They did. They, so, all right. So, let me ask you this question, man. And we could. I feel like we could talk about it freely, right? Because it's already a, a, sure. a season out. Um, why did they feel the need to build all of this character development just to kill them before the show really begins on its t- on its path? Because they had to. Because they wanted you invested, and they want you to come back. But you're inv- they're ma- Here was my question. Yeah, you're investing in Jesse. You're investing in Tulip. Mm-hmm. You're investing in in um, oh my God, uh, Cassidy. Cassidy, yeah. But what, like, you what if you, like Arse Face and like all of these people that you really like are invested in, like the girl that was running the church. You start to love these characters. You, their Gone. stories, their stories aren't done yet. But not yet, maybe. But not. I I think that there's a bigger plan, especially since uh, I don't know if you knew this. Um, the the kid who plays Arse Face. He's a local kid. He's right? a local. Yeah. yeah. Ian something. Arse Face? Arse Face. That's like his ass name. face? Well, well uh <laughs> like the the British ass face, yes. Arse face. Hmm. And there's a very big reason why. Oh, okay. Huge yeah, see, reason. I'm not I'm not too familiar. No, but you, when when Mike hooks you up with that comic, yeah. you you know, you're All right, gonna know. I have to read and it. You're gonna love this you're gonna love him as a character. You're gonna be like, this guy's great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You're gonna be like, he reminds me a little bit of Dennis. Yes, a man, bit, yeah. a lot a bit. You know what would be interesting when you get that comic book is to do a Facebook live of you reading it. <laughs> and no, like out loud, not silently. No, not, read it out, yeah, yeah, saying. dude. Not just like a silent <laughs> of a you dramatic flipping through. Interpretation? Yeah, yeah. Like, not only dramatic, but I would love to see like how Derek would read a comic and how he because I feel like he would like read a little bit of it and then be like, oh, I mean, I would have been so much better drawn than this guy, and you would like <laughs> start putting yourself into it more and more and more. <laughs> Well, maybe. And I think that would be comical. Well, and then we could do a, a preacher, a one man show, and you could play all the parts. <laughs> yeah. I've done a one man show. That's no, not like this. You haven't. <laughs> and you're gonna be like, this is this is genius. I'm so glad I thought of this. I would love to see Derek tell himself, "Well, for this," and then Derek have to. Go for oh, that's gonna be awesome, <laughs> right? Are you making? Are you writing an edit? Do I have to cut that out? No. Right, Not do, even close. Do you? Uh, <laughs> I was answering for Frank. Are you? Per, are you, uh, Frankie? Are you prepared? Uh, first of all, I, we're going a little longer than we usually do, so I want to give you the option here. I don't want to. I don't want to keep you all night, but we have a game. I don't know if let's you, rock. You want to play it? Hey, I cleared my night for you guys. All right, all right, I am at your disposal. <laughs> nice, thank you. Uh, we appreciate and we appreciate that, Frankie. Are, are we prepared? Is it? In, oh, it's in this cup. Is that a real question? My fault. I'm in. Sorry. Who? Is, do we, is Dan here? He's always here. Dan's here. Were you just texting him? Uh, yeah, I was texting him to come out of the closet. Well, right. Get him out of the closet. Hey, Dan! Can I come out of the back? Well, hey, everybody! Dan Bottom here. It's B-O-D-D-A-N. Uh, Mike, every time Dan Bottom comes on, he's our resident announcer. Game! He spells his name differently. We really don't know how to spell it. What are you talking That's about? It's Dan Bottom. B-O-D-D-U-S. It's so confusing. Bottom! And he's an idiot. If we can get him to actually introduce this game... It'll be a miracle. That's Dad a- Bottom here for the PBR Podcast with Derek D and Mike Blatter. We're going to play a game. A game. You didn't even say, <laughs> you say, you didn't we even got, say our guest We got Zip Zack and Mike, man. That's right. He, he spelled it right. He's an Beautiful. idiot. I apologize. That's all right. You know what? I That's a really small closet. He's a really big guy. Game. He is. How the hell did he get in there? He's pretty big. Dan, uh, do you want to describe the game for us? You know okay, this game's a game where we play some sort of game and someone's going to win. Oh, Take geez. it away, Mike. It's very difficult. The game is called Ask the. Ask the game. All right, so basically, Frank, jump in here because you wrote this one and you and you didn't give me the the rules. Oh, the rules are you. Everyone come up with a political uh, uh, commentary. It's been a while. <laughs> I don't usually have to give you the rules. Um, you come up with a political commentary. I remember this. So some sort of hot, to- uh, you know, hot hot pub, topic. You can hot say topic, that hot topic. Uh, hot topic I love right that story. now. Like, and, well, um, <laughs> then you will pick Photoshop. out of the cup. The cup will be filled with ask the 
Superheroes? Superheroes. Superheroes. And you have to respond to the other person's political topic or hot topic as the superhero. So, so roughly, uh, I could say uh, Donald Trump wants to build the wall between the United States and Mexico. How do you feel about it? You're going to pick a character. You're going to pick a character. Answer my question as that character. I guess, if I'm right, points. Yes. Frankie will keep score. There Fantastic. Let's rock. So I guess... Uh, Dan, get out of here. <laughs> so, so take a second to think of a, of a uh, you know politically charged uh, hot topic. Derek, did you have to kick him in the ass? I right tried now? to... I guess, like, dude, you're God. done. He's like, he's like lingering over my shoulder. Oh, my God. And that, that had to hurt. Yeah. Like he's still yelling it. He's yelling it from the back. Um, so, all right. So you, you are a guest. So I will give you the option. Would you like to uh, give your politically charged commentary and guess first, or would you like to be... A character. I'll be a character. Okay, so pick one. Pick one. Derek? I'm picking one, right? Uh, You you pick. All right, so I'll get... So um, while you guys take a look at your character, and uh, you're going to have to answer my question. Uh, So it's like, listen, the climate right now is so... The political climate in this country is a mess, right? Uh, You know, we got... We have Donald Trump as our president, like red and blue. Everybody's fighting. By the way, I'm great. People vote us, everybody. Uh, people are picketing in the streets, right? Picketing? Yeah, oh yeah. I believe so, the holy up sign saying I'm great. So, Everyone's <laughs> great. It's fantastic. So you superheroes, how do you feel about um, how do you feel about Donald Trump's Secretary of Education pick, who just got passed through Betsy DeVoe? Well, the the Flash, the Flash feels. Oh no! Oh, no. oh, oh did, I, did I screw things up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have to, you have to. Okay, never mind. Damn right, bottom. Right. Damn bottom. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, everybody. He's even stupider than I am. <laughs> All right, never mind. All right. You All right got, I have to guess who you, you got. Okay, good enough. Guess yeah. who you are. All right, good enough. Did you get a new one now? I did. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, you know, mine's not the Flash. Practice run. There we go. <laughs> now I know the rules. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, our sec- Donald Trump's Secretary of Education pick, uh, Betsy DeVoe. I believe it's DeVos. DeVos, it? DeVos. Yeah, Bell Biv DeVos. She's fantastic. Okay, I gotta tell you, she's fantastic. Uh, you, oh, oh me, gonna, not Donald. No, not Donald. Derek. Okay. Uh, well, you know, first I gotta say that uh, besides all that, let's talk about, you know, environment and green, right? I mean, because I'm... I can, you know, if you can't really see, I kind of hold up a light, or I got a light that comes from me. He's and, so inaccurate, but I, I got it. But he's <laughs> so inaccurate. What he's saying, keep going. Because I had a horn in the movie. Uh, <laughs> no, you didn't. Divos. Ke- Divos. Get oh, the, the education. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's gonna be great for me. Terrible. And because I got that jewel. You know, nothing what I'm he said was accurate about being. The as green long lantern. as the education, the green lantern? I'm the Green Lantern. <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing he said was. Accurate, I forgot right? what the Green Lantern. Does. Not even he didn't close. even mention no. the ring. No. Well, yeah. He, oh, he did the say ring. Stuff. I said the, ring. the jewel. No, he, he said the jewel. Yeah. 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 Oh, he jewel. did say the jewel. The jewel. The jewel. 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 So, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, I gotta say, she's a horrible pick because I'm I'm a product of um, the public education system. Um, I think I, I already would know. not have even gotten to the higher learning segment, which you know I spent 20 years in and oh. finally graduated. Um, Got to be honest, um, I think that J. Jonah Jameson would be a much better. Oh, pick. oh, so so I was gonna say Peter Parker. Excellent! Wow! wow. Why, nice. why the extra 20 years? I, then I started to go towards like a doctor, or somebody. But no, no, no. He I, was he was in comic book time. In, in, in real time, <laughs> he was in. You almost threw me for a loop. College for twenty right, years. Good. I'm surprised you had no clue. I was gonna say Captain Planet. No, I, I got so Frankie. Well, mark, mark that down. <laughs> I, got, I got two correct. You know, you, you want to? Uh, do you want to give? Who wants to give? So you got two points for that. I got two points. Yeah, right. I was the Green Lantern. I'm picking one. Hey, good, Mike. You pick, and then Derek, give us. And you're your, pick, uh, your okay. Pick. Um, so politically charged statement up uh, uh, issue, I guess, would be. Uh, I don't know. Donald Trump. Trump. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump is our president. Do you want to go first? Absolutely. I've served this country with honor and distinction, at least I hope I have, uh, since WW2, since the big one. Ah, I got it. Uh, I think I got all it. All right. And um, I, I don't care who's I've, – oh. I've been I've, – I've been a member of the military for – Oh God! The you serve proudly. Serve proudly for the past seventy years under many, many presidents, and mm. uh, I don't see myself 
shirking the newest one. <laughs> yeah, you got a great shield. Okay. Thank you're, you. You're, you're up next. Listen, uh, if you try to grab me by my piece, okay, I'll take the lasso, put it around your neck, and drag you from my invisible airline right over that wall. So we got Wonder Woman <laughs> and Captain America. Excellent. Yes. yes. What? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> so, all right, so it's two, two to two to two. Okay. Politi politically charged. Um, I mean, you know, it doesn't have, doesn't have uh, to be. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel it has to be. Um, can you believe these I'm people? Throwing, this one's yeah, too easy. I'm throwing. All right, there you go. I, I can't do a Donald Trump. I, I don't do a, an <laughs> impersonation of him, but uh, I love how he uses the biggest podium to get up there and complain about his daughter. Losing the Nordstrom contract. That, that to me. You gotta admit, that's a hell of a contract. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. Not, not anymore. What she was doing. I mean, they she want. looks great. Look at her. Have you seen her? She's been, and by the way, The Apprentice sucks. The ratings are down. Let's do a prayer about it, okay? Let's have breakfast. I'll do a prayer. <laughs> I'm great. Mike, you're an idiot. It's true. Not Sapsic. This guy. <laughs> Who's going first? Uh, um, you. Oh, me. You yeah, are. Derek, me. you go first. I'm having, I'm having trouble with this because. It's too You're new. the master, man. And yeah. I wanna I wanna play it like do I play it like do I try to do I throw you a softball or do I try to trick you? I don't think I could stump you if I wanted to. Yeah, I don't think I could either. You know what I mean? <laughs> I really don't. So you're like, all right, so screw the game. <laughs> no, I think you I go, go first. first. Yeah. You go first. All right, my uh my 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 dad was a great man. Um and um I gotta say it took a lot of development until we got to where we are. I mean with the the, the, the Mark One and uh, now we're at uh you know, I kind of was at a crossroads recently with, uh, you, you know, all right at the Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Of, oh, uh, Tony Stark? Tony Stark, yeah. Oh. Kind, of to, kind of had to sign something and uh, go against uh, some of my crew in the Avengers, but, uh, you know. He's still going. We figured, we figured it out. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I got great like, facial hair. <laughs> I, don't know which, I don't know which universe I'm in. Like, I mean, sometimes, like, my storylines get so crooked, but, God, my, I got this arthritis. I don't know if it's arthritis or what's going on, but, like. Ah, my hands. Oh, like I know. Uh, you know. Logan, what are you talking about? Yeah, buddy? That oh, was really? good. Yeah, I was I like trying to go a different way, I man. Like that. Right? Old man Logan. Old man too. Logan. What do, you think? what do you think of that? Oh, you, it looks fantastic, you, doesn't, doesn't it? it? You it's threw tough. me off a bit because didn't Doctor Strange get his hands all messed up? That was actually, you, that, that, there might have been, but I didn't think it was arthritis because those hands were really messed up. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, the new Logan though, huh? Going this um, different dark route. Amazing. Are you stoked about it? I'm yeah. very stoked about it. I can't. Dude, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, because I, I feel like it's getting more into like the deep, like just deeper than like boom, boom, boom CGI. Damn, I'm gonna have to get you a bunch of books then, because this is based <laughs> off of Old Man Logan. Uh, oh no, I'm he can't read. Mark Miller. He can't read. It is fantastic. <laughs> oh, pictures, man. Pictures. <laughs> Come on, Mike. There there's are some. There's pictures. some words. Um, well, I mean, maybe. Hey, Mike, can you help me out with this word right here? <laughs> the. the, yeah. Frankie, we have we have three left. Let, let's see how good you are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Come on, real quick, get, throw it. Come on, we got three left. Absolutely not. You got to guess. Come on. Oh, wait. Absolutely not. Oh, come on, <laughs> Frankie, yeah. Frankie. The only All thing right. that could hurt me worse than those words is kryptonite. <laughs> Frankie. I got it. <laughs> I'm not the podcast. I'm not, I'm not the devil this podcast deserves. I'm the one it needs. Got it. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, I think I got, got it. it. I got it. Um, you know, I, I just like, I'm like this kid always playing second fiddle. And it's like, oh, got you it. always get the credit. And it's like, bam, boom, whop. And I... <laughs> Why are you maybe wear the short pants? Maybe we shouldn't do it. Please. I'm over here with a. I'm, o, I'm over here with a girl or a guy's name. It's just charades. So who's who? No, charades. Superman, Batman, Robin. Wow! Yeah. We're all winners. Hey! Good job, everybody. Technically, I win because that was three points. There was. Oh, oh, yeah. Frankie oh, flipping the script. Man, she has. <laughs> that was brilliant. That was pretty brilliant. Oh, my God. Um, the year is 2050, 33 <laughs> years from today. Uh, this show's all about the revolution of our guests, which is you. So what does your industry look like in the year 2050? What, what does comic, comic books? books? Yeah, what do they look like? Whatever your industry is, oh, man. Oh, dear God in heaven. Um, this is one we have not tackled no, thus far. We have 82 not. plus episodes in. I got to be honest with you. I, I mean, I don't see there being... Actually, I see there being a whole different set of rules going on. Uh, print will never go out of style. 
Um, there are people, hardcore collectors, loved having like the physical comic book. You can download yeah. an Incredible Hulk 181. It doesn't mean that you've got the Hulk 181. Right. Because if I want to have a Hulk 181, I'm going to have to spend $2,000 for it. So I think that um, you're not going to see a comic book shop in every town, but you don't see that now anyway. Right, sure. So, I used to um, go to Comics Plus. Comics Plus, <laughs> yeah, over... Uh, An ocean. Yeah, you can yeah. chuck a rock from here. And yeah. and yeah, we used to go there too. They had a, a, a box of like 50 cent books and uh that's where i got all my stuff yeah that's not worth anything <laughs> yeah i know yeah. anyway sorry me, me neither <laughs> hey 90 percent of every person's collection is crap yeah so don't sweat it um i think that maybe like one or two in a in a state really uh i think that comic cons are going to get much bigger but i don't think that actually I, i'm you know what i lied not two or three in every state i think there's going to be uh probably as many as now they're just going to be in different, I don't know, like the internet cafes back in the yeah. the, the 90s and, and the aughts, um, how they went away and then they came back in a, a really weird form. Mm. So I think that you're going to see comic book shops. Comic book cons are going to be like bigger and better than ever. And I think that Steven Spielberg is full of shit. I think he's like sour grapes because no one asked him to direct a comic book movie. Why? What did he say? He said that it's a genre and it's going to fade like the Western. I, you know, I, that was the question. I was Star gonna Wars. Ask you that's next. never faded, and that's no. how long that's. That's essentially in that same realm of. Yeah, of course. The, the question I was going to ask you is: Do you do you see the? It, it's in vogue right now for all of these adaptations, but. Then when you think about it, these adaptations have been going on for and 10 years. They could keep years. going. Actually, these... I mean, longer. But yeah, they've been going for 10 years, but, I mean, the source material goes back 50. Right. Oh, Actually, in Superman, it goes back almost 80. I, and it's actually infinite, right? Like, like how many people knew Guardians of the Galaxy existed mainstream before right. the movie? None. So there's a lot out there, right? How many people had ever heard of Ant-Man? How many people had ever heard of Deadpool? You're right, I did because he had cards. a lot. He had a yeah, lot of <laughs> he had a lot of trouble make, getting that made too. That was though. a great movie. Right? What did you think of Deadpool? It was amazing. Like it's just like one of my favorite comic books. breaking ones. the mold and like totally. Didn't he put he backed that himself? Yeah. and fought to get that made. He took a lot of risk, but it paid off. The it paid off big. Breaking all the, the he was like I think we broke broke the sixteenth wall there. And like, <laughs> he makes fun of Ryan Reynolds to the camera. I mean, oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Do you guys watch the Netflix shows? Yes, which da one? Daredevil. All, Daredevil. Oh. There's Daredevil, Jessica Jones, I didn't see uh, that Luke one. Cage. No. You should watch all. They're fantastic. They they up the game. Mm -hmm. It's not just a guy with superpowers. It's a guy who goes out, kicks ass. Like this is Daredevil. I'm talking. There's about. been two seasons of Daredevil, right? Yeah, yeah. I've seen both of those. And the guy that plays the Punisher. Come on, John Barenthal he's, he's great. from Walking oh, Dead. Oh yeah. yeah, he's great. He is amazing. He's good. He is, <laughs> he is Frank Castle. He. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, he the the deputy. Yeah, he, he was Shane. Shane. Yeah. Um, I feel like. Do you think comic book? I, I, I mean, in the few say thirty three years from now, you'll get a comic book. You can hold it. You can read it. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a little plug. You plug it in. You put it into your VR, and like you could like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, you're, wow. God, nice. you're an innocent bystander. So you yeah. can either you read it that? or like be in it, and it's like narrated to you as well. Maybe. Sure. I mean, the pictures yeah. are just a little. Broader, yeah, you know, you know, Stanley downloads his consciousness before he dies. Downloads his consciousness into the web, and mm. he's, guess what, true believer, you've just purchased a Marvel comic book. <laughs> <laughs> I just Bring along with Stan. Ha has the has the uh, popularity of like a Kindle or anything like that? Has there been any translation like a Kindle Fire? There's, yeah, there's um, there's. Can you buy? You can yeah, buy, you can okay. uh, on uh, a site called Comicsology. Which oddly enough was the name of this the secret stash before the secret stash uh, was the secret stash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Comicsology you can go download almost any book you want. Right, and even new releases, some old stuff. But I don't think it's ever gonna take the place of. Yeah. Uh, it's great for being on a, a plane from West Palm Beach, um, <laughs> which one of my favorite airports. By yeah, the way. so easy, isn't it? Yeah, I know. My father used to live it's down like at AC. Stewart. Like Actually, I lived down in Hope Sound for about a year, so that was pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, speaking of Florida, um, but a Kindle will never take the place. It's right. great. It's great for the uh, convenience. And at like four o'clock in the morning, you're like, hey, you know what? I really want to read. Um, I don't know, Starlog from 1977. You can Boom, probably sorry. buy it. Yeah, it's right yeah. there. But you know, the smell, the texture, same as books. 
The hardcore collectors are never going to go away. But not newspaper. Newspaper sucks. Newspaper, sucks, right? <laughs> newspapers. It's like this. This is. It's, I want to go on Google. Yeah, and it's also not newspapers. Are just not what they used to be. It's no. all one side, one or the other side. Of, of this course. And that. And it's like just, 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 just shut up. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I said. It's like my Facebook feed. Shut up. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for coming out, man. It was great having you on. Thank you so much. Is there uh, anything you want to plug on the way out? Um, the Ming and Mike show drops every Friday. Uh, we've got I Sell Comics. If you like comic books, listen to Ming and Mike talk about bullcrap comic books. <laughs> um, you can follow me on, on Twitter. I'm at Michael Zapsick. Oh, uh, yeah, just um, at the Derek D on Twitter. Just go to DerekD.com. Frankie, oh, uh, PBR Podcast store is up. Um, a lot of people putting up their pictures, and we love them. PBRpodcast.com. Keep, keep sending them to us. PBR Podcast, you can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let's give us some love, and we will love you back. Thanks again, man. Thank you, guys.